the joys of motherhood are they joys or sorrows is this title an ironic title we will find out in today's capsule summary hello how are you this is heena from team walat and today's novel of discussion is the joys of motherhood published in the year 1979 written by buchi emachita look at buchi on the screen She was a Nigerian-born novelist but based in UK. She lived from 1944 to 2017. The genre of The Joys of Motherhood is Bildung's Roman because it talks of the psychological, the physical growth of the protagonist called Nu Ego. Nu Ego. Remember the name Nu Ego. Now, setting of The Joys of Motherhood is two places in Nigeria. first is ogboli ibuza okay this is like a village ibuza and the other is urban okay lagos so one is rural ogboli ibuza and the other is urban location of lagos and the time period of the novel is starting from 1909 till 1950s okay it will cover the world wars also narrator of the joys of motherhood is third person omniscient and the basis of this novel is you must know this this is what we will revolve around today necessity for a nigerian woman to be fertile and preferably to give birth only to sons not to daughters okay now scene the first scene in the novel is carter bridge in lagos nu ego is the protagonist of the joys of motherhood her name literally means 20 bags of quarries which means she is very precious She was born in Igbo community in the rural village of Ibuza. Now currently what has happened Nu Ego's first child with her husband Nefe has died in infancy. So she has decided to end her life. She is depressed. She has lost her son. So she wants to commit suicide by jumping off from Carter Bridge in Lagos. Here the theme of failure and freedom is discussed because she feels that because her son is no more because she is not a mother anymore she has failed in her life and when she will die when she will jump off the bridge she will get freedom from this life understood now after this the scene quickly shifts there's a flashback of 25 years ago which means nu ego will be born now 25 years ago where in ogboli ibuza nigeria let's start what happens 25 years before this before jumping from the carter bridge agbari is a wealthy village chief okay this is the name of a man called agbari will you remember agbari is a wealthy village chief He gets infatuated with a girl called Ona. Ona is the daughter of a neighboring chief. However, Ona is a strong-willed girl who resents Akbari's sexual suggestions. But as destiny has it, once Akbari gets badly hurt while on an elephant hunting trip, and after this, it is Ona who nurses slowly, slowly nurses Akbari back to his health. And after this, they marry and they have a daughter together. The name of this daughter is Nu Ego. Understood? So, who are the parents of Nu Ego? It is Ona and it is Agbari. Ona is the mother. Agbari is the father. See, you can call her Nu Ego also. You can call her Nu Ego also. Don't go on the proper names. Uh, you know, exact pronunciation. Different people pronounce her name in different ways. I am calling her Nu Ego. Now, but after a year, Ona, the mother, dies in childbirth. So Nu Ego is the sole surviving daughter and sole surviving child of Akbari and Ona. She grows up among strict traditions of Igbo community. Sixteen years later, she is ready to marry. She comes of marriageable age. So she is betrothed to a man called Amatoku. Who? Amatoku. but after marriage she fails to provide him with children and do you know the basis of this novel a woman has to be fertile now tell me what will happen in this case when amato ku will come to know that nu ego cannot bear children of course he will get more wives this was very easily allowed in african culture then if your wife cannot bear children or if you're not gelling well with your wife go get another wife okay so exactly as you know in her culture a girl's sole purpose in life was to bear children here the theme of motherhood and fertility is discussed so amato ku gets a new wife listen to a scene from the novel this is very heart touching once this new wife's infant son cries in hunger okay 
the new wife has given birth to a son and the son is crying in hunger out of desperation out of that will to become a mother herself what does new ego do she starts breastfeeding the child does the milk come also or not we don't know but then new ego starts breastfeeding this child and when amato who sees this he beats her severely new ego has these dreams when she's sleeping she dreams of babies in danger she dreams of children being taken away by her chi chi is the guiding spirit you right she even thinks of kidnapping amato ku's son and raising him alone in peace she feels like running away from the house with the son okay eventually new ego and amato ku get separated and akbari remarries his daughter to nafe far from lagos and uh, you know sorry far from uh, i mean this nafe he belongs to the far land of lagos okay this is far from ibuza this is how the setting of the novel will change from ibuza to lagos did you understand so who is the first husband of new ego amato ku who is the second husband of new ego nafe easy so new ego moves to lagos and lives happily just for a short span with her husband who is nefe by profession well nefe is a laundry man for a british couple called mears here colonialism of course this is early 20th century nigeria had the rule of the britishers surprisingly happily new ego gets pregnant soon and she gives birth to a son to her first child called gozi okay so who is gozi new ego's son with nefe easy easy after this new ego also starts her own business of selling cigarettes and matches besides the road however her happiness does not last long because gozi dies soon once she returns home she finds gozi dead on the bed she decides to end her life by jumping off the carter bridge do you understand the start of the novel is getting connected here now okay go to the first page of the novel that i taught you today so it is getting connected she's ending her life by jumping off the carter bridge but what happens a man called nuakus nuakusor nuakusor he comes and he rescues new ego okay and new ego is saved seen present day lagos now what happens in lagos no ego gradually and painfully is trying to recover from gozi's death eventually she gives birth again yes there's a birth again again she gives birth to a son called oshaya so here i have written the first living child of no ego and nefe his name is oshaya oshaya no ego realizes that until now she was trying to be a traditional ibuza woman in a modern lego setting and this caused the death of gozi so she says that now i will play according to the new rules that is live in a white man's world what is the white man's world here the support of the family is done only by man supporting the family is only the man's duty so she leaves her cigarette business and she takes care of her child oshaya but shockingly after this for the couple the mears return to england if they return of course nefe will be out of job nefe is out of job he tries to get another job which he gets but it is far from home working for a group of english men okay listen to these lines from the story a lady in the novel says for these men like nefe and others who are working for the whites men here are too busy being white men servants to be men we women mind the home not our husbands their manhood has been taken away from them shame is that they don't know about it while nefe is away british soldiers enter new ego's one room house in yaba compound in lagos and they order her to vacate this house immediately what will this mother with a young child oshaya do of course she leaves the house rents a shabby room and gives birth to second son called adim 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 please remember oshaya is the first son gozi was the son who died so oshaya the first living son followed by adim however without her husband nafe the family slowly succumbs to malnutrition there is no money whatever money 
is coming that is not enough, okay? When Nu Ego decides to sell cigarettes again with the help of her neighbors, her husband Nefe returns and this time with a lot of money. So what does Nu Ego do? She decides to secure a permanent stall in the marketplace where she will sell things while Nefe tries to find his next job, okay? Now, the scene changes. Please listen to this important scene from The Joys of Motherhood. Here, Nefe's brother, who lives in rural Ibuza, he dies. Now, as tradition has it in Igbo community, if the brother dies, how many wives he has, all those wives become the property of the other brother. So here, all of Nefe's brother's wives will become Nefe's property or they will become Nefe's wives. Understood? So Nefe inherits all of his dead brother's wives, but only one can come and live with him in Lagos because it is an urban city, not too much space is there. So who comes to live in Lagos? The name of this bride or this woman is Adaku. Adaku was the youngest wife of Nefe's brother. She arrives in Lagos with her daughter. And of course, as it has to be, she brings a lot of tensions in the family. How can Nu Ego bear, you know, another wife all of a sudden? Now, quote, lines from the novel, it occurred to Nu Ego that she was a prisoner, imprisoned by her love for her children, imprisoned in her role as the senior wife. As an Igbo woman, Nu Ego can pursue only one life path. She must produce children, especially boys. As the senior wife, Nu Ego is expected to endure the humiliation when Adaku, Nefe's crafty and attractive second wife, arrives in Lagos and becomes a part of the Ovulum family. There are scenes in the novel when it is shown that the three of them are sleeping together in the same room and Nafa, you know, Nafe is consummating with this second wife, with, you know, this lady named Adaku, whereas Nuego is trying to sleep there. She feels powerless. After this, Nuego gets pregnant again. And this time she gives birth to twin girls. What is the name of these twin girls? Taivu and Kehinde. Remember, Taivu and Kehinde. So tell me the names of their children now, Nuego and Nefe. First is Oshaya. Second is Adim. Third is Taivo. And fourth is Kehinde. Okay. While Adaku also gives birth to a son from Nefe, but this son dies soon after birth. Now, World War II time. Nefe is forced to join the army and is sent to India, then to Burma to fight in World War II, which means the time span in the novel is somewhere between 1939 to 1945. What will happen in the absence of Nefe? Of course, they will face financial troubles, which they have been facing all this time. Now, you know, her father, Akbari, is not well. So, Nu Ego takes her family to Ibuza, where her father, Akbari, is on his deathbed. Akbari dies soon after and he receives two funerals. Basically, how you receive your funeral decides your stature in life and after death in Igbo community. So, he gets a very grand funeral, Okay. For a short span, Nefe also comes to Ibuza, but now he tries to woo other women. He wants more wives. He already has two wives. He wants more. So here he impregnates Adan Kuo. Who is Adan Kuo? His brother's eldest wife. And he returns to Lagos with a third bride called Okpo. Okpo is a young girl, a teenage girl. Okay. Nu Ego also returns to Lagos and here she has a bitter fight with Adaku, following which Adaku, the youngest wife of Nefe's brother, remember? Adaku leaves the house in Lagos and turns into a prostitute. Nu Ego shifts to a more shabbier house with, more, with no money in hand. She gives birth to more children, let me tell you, during this time. She has saved tough to secure for Oshaya's and Adim's education in school. She tries to give her sons good education, which they do get. But now what happens? Listen to the fate of Nu Ego and Nefe's children. First, Oshaya. Oshaya reveals that he has won a scholarship to study in the United States. Nafe denounces Oshaya for ignoring his filial duty, that is duty towards his parents. But eventually, Oshaya leaves for the US to study, disappointing his parents never to return. The theme here is individual versus society. For Nu Ego and Nefe, society was important. But for the younger generation, the individual, that is their self, is more important. 
Later, Oshaya marries a white woman and settles in the US. Second, Kehinde. Kehinde is the twin daughter, remember? She runs away with a stranger she meets from Yoruba. Just like Igbo, Yoruba is also an ethnic community in Nigeria. But Igbo and Yoruba did not go along very well. Because of which Nefe cannot accept his daughter marrying a Yoruba. He wants her to marry only an Igbo. So he goes and tries to murder the boy's father, the boy with whom Gehende has run away. As a result, Nefe is imprisoned for five years. Now what happens to Taivo, the other twin daughter? Taivo is arranged to marry with a lawyer of Igbo community who helps in fighting the case for his father-in-law, Nefe. Okay. And then let's talk about Adim, the second son, Adim. Adim moves to Canada. Oshaya moved to United States. Adim moves to Canada after his father's imprisonment. He has no desire to remain connected with his family back home. Here, the theme of ambiguous rewards of motherhood is discussed. Tell me, what reward, what reward did Nu Ego get after raising four children, after living in so much poverty, after giving herself away for the sake of her children? Ambiguous rewards of motherhood. Line from the novel, her love and duty for her children were like her chain of slavery. And this takes us to the end of the joys of motherhood. How does this novel end? First, New Ego returns to her homeland, Ibuza. Second, all this time she's growing old, she realizes the misled idealism of motherhood. For her, motherhood was her greatest joy as well as her greatest defeat. She regrets having so many children who have such less or little concern for her well-being. They do not come to visit her. Third, several years later, having been called as a mad woman in Ibuza, Nu Ego dies alone by the roadside. Fourth, it is only after her death that her Kids come to visit her. Oshaya arranges for a grand, lavish funeral for her mother. Okay. After which Oshaya also erects a shrine, a statue in the village for her mother, where the women come bow down in front of this statue to pray for fertility and motherhood. But as in life, when anybody came to New Ego and said, please, please, we also want children like you, sons like you, she never said yes, that your wish will be granted. She was always quiet. So will her statue grant the wish of the women for fertility and motherhood? It's an ironic title, The Joys of Motherhood. How was it? I liked it. It's very nice, yes? See, I feel, I personally feel, children are important for our self-attainment, for our happiness. But if you are okay with them, if without them, if you're okay without children, it's your call. If you love them, move on with your life with them. If you don't want kids, it's your call. But amongst all this, children fight, no children fight. Keep your self-identity, okay? Keep yourself as a woman safe. Have your own identity. How? I'm not saying that work 12 out of 24 hours or 18 out of 24 hours your identity in several ways. Keep your peace. Have some goal towards your life. It can be anything which keeps you happy. You know, it can be something which gives you self-fulfillment. What is it? It is for you to decide. Yes, this is The Joys of Motherhood by Buchi Emachita. I am Hina Vadwani from Team Walad. Take very good care of yourself and do subscribe to our channel if you still haven't. Bye-bye.